Mr. Speaker, before I begin my substantive contribution on the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 23-24, with your permission, Mr. Speaker, I would like to extend sincere condolences to the family of Peter Gustav, also known as Sentence from Canaries. I would also, Mr. Speaker, like to extend condolences to the Dario family of Vanna. I would also, Mr. Speaker, like to extend condolences to the family of Peterson Edward of Vanna. Express condolences to UWP. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here long enough to be able to do that. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I would also like to draw the attention of this Honorable House that in congratulating Johnson Charles on his amazing achievement, Mr. Speaker, you omitted a very important bit of information. That important bit of information is that Johnson Charles is from the constituency of Ontario Canaries. More specifically, Millet. Mr. Speaker, I say important bit of information not for any self-aggrandizement, but to reinforce in the minds of every young boy and girl in the constituency that indeed, and indeed the country, that they too can aspire to greatness. We, Mr. Speaker, in Ontario Canaries, are better than our misfortunes. Which brings me, Mr. Speaker, to another point, and I will say more about it during the policy debate. Mr. Speaker, this reference to Ansari being the poorest, Ansari Khan has been the poorest constituency, and Mikunov being the second poorest constituency, is a reference, Mr. Speaker, we should set aside and move towards a metric that does not stigmatize like a constituency development index where constituencies are measured by, and to be determined, just a sort of indicators which are then rated, which is an entirely different mindset. And Mr. Speaker, more on that later. The dignity, Mr. Speaker, of the people of Ansari Canaries is important to me. Mr. Speaker, the member for Social Saltibus attempted to harvest a short crop yesterday. A short crop. When he indicated that the fruit of prudential stewardship was as given, as given form in the estimates of revenue and expenditure are the results of seeds they sowed. Mr. Speaker, for seeds to germinate and bear fruit, they must be placed into fertile soil. You cannot produce these results in an environment which is not conducive and devoid of love, due care, and attention. And Mr. Speaker, why I say that? Mr. Speaker, why it cannot be of the hands of their making? Mr. Speaker, as you may be aware, St. Lucia's debt to GDP ratio rose sharply during the COVID-19 crisis increasing by some 31 percentage points or 50 percent from the 2019 levels and it is a well-known phenomenon all countries did so but on a comparative basis this increase was vastly sharper than that posted by other countries not only in the world but on average countries increased their debt as a share of gdp by only nine percentage points of course mr speaker we are well recognized the issue of the global pandemic. In the region, Mr. Speaker, excluding St. Lucia, countries increased their debt as a share of GDP by 15 percentage points, or 21 percent from the 2019 levels. Less than half the increase posted by St. Lucia. Critically, Mr. Speaker, at 15 percent of fiscal revenues, the interest burden in St. Lucia is also in the top quintile of the world and is 2.5 times higher than the average of other countries in this region. So it's not enough to simply say COVID, 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 and that these are the seeds of your hard work. It is clearly not. It is prudential stewardship from the member for cash receipts. St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, was the only country in the region to have increased the proportion of its budget 
devoted to interest payments by two percentage points. During the COVID crisis, again, in part due to a relative large share of the debt stock of, on commercial terms, which the former Minister of Finance was very keen on doing, there is only one other country, Mr. Speaker, when I would mention the name in the ECCU, which continues to operate in the position of extended arrears and default. We are not aware of any of government of solutions peers in the region, which has mounting payables or off balance sheet commitments similar to those of the DFC. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, having gone through all the heads, line items, and the estimates of revenue and expenditure, Mr. Speaker, I think it's important to underscore the fundamental philosophical difference between a government led by the member of Cashews East and, of course, the member for Miku South. Mr. Speaker, the member for Sojourn, and I'm not sure if the Prime Minister will allow me to respond to his questions, Prime Minister, if I may. <laughs> Yesterday, the member for Sojel posed a, a series of questions, and he made the point that he was concerned about justice and what we were doing. Mr. Speaker, as contained in the estimates, there's, there will be an upgrade of the coroner's court, resources to the traffic court, the swift justice project to help with the backlog of cases which the member for Sojel mentioned. There's also funds to increase, to assist with the operational cost of the high court, including consultancy. Funds were provided for the DPP North and South offices. New rental for the second district court to assist with the relocation to allow for continued court seating, rehabilitation of the first district courts, the GEMS project, Mr. Speaker, to assist with the digitization of court records to provide quick access to court data, thereby increasing the efficiency of the court system. Mr. Speaker, he also went on to indicate that he was wondering why the increase in personnel was so few. But he did not mention, Mr. Speaker, that a significant amount of the money is allocated to regularize, regularize police officers, two additional probation officers, 15 constables for major crime units, and approximately 75 officers will be reassigned from different desk duties to a more active, to more active duty. He also mentioned, Mr. Speaker, and I'm trying to read based on what he wrote, the no reintroduction of the K-9 unit he also made the point that the Department of Agriculture was not given sufficient assistance, which again, Mr. Speaker, is a figment of their imagination. $780,700 was made available to the Predial Lastency Program to protect banana produce. One million for the banana management unit to ameliorate the challenges plaguing the banana industry. And I know the Minister of Agriculture could defend himself, but I think I'll on my feet, I will respond to you, comrade. For pest and disease surveillance control, drainage infrastructure, and improvement in public awareness and training. Mr. Speaker, he also asked a question about farmers with disabilities. Land will be allocated to them. There is also 10,000 to provide it as grant to farmers with disabilities. He also mentioned his point about the Social Arts and Craft Center. I think he will be well advised that a total of 540,000 has been made available to develop component two of the social, craft, social arts and craft center, including, including training for vendors under the ORTC project. Heritage sites to be acquired to erect some of the green spaces that you referred to. He also made mention of the Department of Housing um, and there was, he said, I believe, a reduction in the, in the budget. Mr. Speaker, $2 million was disbursed, including previous and spent from previous disbursements based on the agreed work program for 2023-2024.
$5.2 million was approved. He went on to speak about the Department of Health and why there was a reassigning of the salaries, reassigning of salaries from, consult from consultancy to the respiratory hospital. And it's simply, Mr. Speaker, to assist with the transitioning of the respiratory hospital. Mr. Speaker. Yes, the transition, to help in the transition to the repository. Sorry? But when you get on your feet, you could ask the Prime Minister those questions. I think, I don't think you should be addressing them to me. The Prime Minister is sufficient enough, or the Minister of Health, to deal with. Mr. S I referred to the questions that he posed, so I responded to the questions. So when, when you making your contribution, you will extend your, your points. Mr. Speaker. As time goes by, as crises emerge and as hope blossoms, we are shaping the history of this country together. For this, Mr. Speaker, we would like to say thank you. Thank you to the people of St. Lucia for their trust, for their patience, for their resilience. Today, Mr. Speaker, we are in a much better shape. It is all about people and people above all. Mr. Speaker, we have, widely, we have wisely leveraged our inherent strengths to protect our socio-economic structure and provide the momentum for our recovery. Today, Mr. Speaker, the results are unquestionable. These figures, Mr. Speaker, prove our economic policies are right, and we will continue in this direction. Supply chain disruptions, the war in Ukraine, are all impacting prices globally. And the former Minister of Finance, the member for Miku South, is very keen on using the word austerity. I'm not quite sure if he understands what it actually means. But we are not in the business. This government and this party is not in the business of bringing hardship to the average St. Lucia. We are not in the business. No, we are not. And the figures prove what you're saying is, sorry? These inflationary pressures require us to act promptly. It is only with strong economic growth that we will drive our future. With more jobs, higher skills, higher production, greater investment, lower inflation, and lower debt. COVID-19, Mr. Speaker, and the conflict in Ukraine are powerful reminders that self-sufficiency is vital. No one would have conceived, Mr. Speaker, that in the 21st century, the world will be apprehensive of food supply shortages. For us, as a country, producing more is no longer just an option. And the Minister of Agriculture touched on that yesterday. Higher levels of self-sufficiency not only means greater food security, but also more investment, more jobs, and higher growth. We also need, Mr. Speaker, to support the transformation of the agricultural sector through mechanization, innovation, and sustainability. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we will continue, Mr. Speaker, to support the expansion of this sector by giving due recognition to locally manufactured products and encouraging exports of solution goods. The tourism sector, Mr. Speaker, is fast recovering. We are confident that we will achieve pre-pandemic figures in the tourism sector. This shows, Mr. Speaker, that St. Lucia remains a destination of choice for travelers. We want everyone arriving in St. Lucia to be given the opportunity to discover our unique products and our unique sites. We need to support and reignite our incredible arts, culture, and historical institutions. Mr. Speaker, it is an industry, arts, culture, that brings together our sense of identity and unites us as one nation. We need to build on this momentum. Small and medium-sized businesses, Mr. Speaker, are the lifeblood of our economy and a powerhouse of growth and employment. Government will spend no effort to nurture the growth of small and medium-sized businesses. 
This budget ensures that St. Lucia remains among the most business-friendly countries in the world for businesses to invest, train, recruit, and innovate. The cleaning and green of St. Lucia, and I'm sure this morning we are Bradley, you would have seen the country is looking cleaner than it was the week before you passed. The cleaning and green of St. Lucia is truly a nationwide effort. In advancing this green transition, we will secure a more sustainable future for ourselves and our children. Recently, Mr. Speaker, the island was, or I should say a particular constituency, was disrupted by major floods. Our thoughts are with those who have lost their homes and their belongings. Nothing can overcome the personal pain and loss. But we will stand by these communities, as the member for Grosley did say yesterday. We will stand by these communities to build resilience to flash floods and other unpredictable weather conditions. Our vision is that of a sustainable solution, greener, more efficient, more inclusive, and more resilient. We need to reimagine our towns and villages as areas of sustainable living. This government has the unflinching conviction that the strength and resilience of our economy resides in, 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 in inclusiveness and not benefits for just a few. We will spare no effort, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that all St. Lucians have access to an equitable and quality education system, resilient healthcare, affordable housing, modern amenities, and a safe environment. Mr. Speaker, the key to our development agenda is education. It is the source of opportunity for every solution. And constituents of mine, Mr. Speaker, are now benefiting from the one university graduate per household. I have constituents of mine now, Mr. Speaker, in Taiwan, and a few hopefully on the way to Taiwan this summer. In 2022, there has been a marked improvement in the performance of students in the Ansari Canaries constituency. I would also like to thank the member for Denry North for always accompanying me on my school visits in the constituency. We will continue to invest to help every child achieve his full potential. Government, Mr. Speaker, will continue to support students with special education needs and learning disabilities. Two years ago, Mr. Speaker, we were faced with the worst and most unpredictable health crisis in our history. Throughout the pandemic, St. Lucians, in particular our healthcare workers, have been exemplary on the front line, fighting against the unknown to protect the lives of our loved ones. We, Mr. Speaker, are much stronger now. What the pandemic, however, has taught us is that we need to relentlessly improve our public health ecosystem and strengthen our resilience. This entails, Mr. Speaker, sustained investments in infrastructure, technology, and skills. Therefore, we are increasing the healthcare budget to strengthen the capacity of the public health sector to deliver high quality services. We are providing for further recruitment of staff. The development and promotion of sports, Mr. Speaker, be it at a community or professional level, a key to a more resilient population. We will continue to support our athletes to participate in various high-level events. We also, Mr. Speaker, want to provide our youth the means to enhance their creativity, desire to read, and engage in sports. Government will continue, Mr. Speaker, to support the police in upholding law and order and for a safer solution for one and all. We are therefore, Mr. Speaker, providing funding to the police to offer a quality and efficient service to the population. Mr. Speaker, I'll turn quite quickly to the budget outturn and the prospects. Mr. Speaker, the estimates confirm the effectiveness of our strategy. We will thus achieve our objective towards bringing on public debt to prudential levels. The budget, this budget, is driven by investment. We are investing to build resilience in our economy, in our public finances, and most importantly, in our people. Mr. Speaker, I will now elaborate on some of the measures for each and everyone. 
government will support the people as it has always done. We have stood by the population, provided sensible advice to the then government while the pandemic was at its worst, and we will continue to stand by them. By them, I refer to the people of St. Lucia, not the opposition. This is why the focus of the measures announced will be investing in people. Mr. Speaker, we are subject to pressures from external shocks. Disruptions to global supply chains, rising energy and commodity prices, magnified by the war in Ukraine, have impacted on the cost of living. We are not, Mr. Speaker, insensitive to this situation. We are not, Mr. Speaker, insensitive to this situation. We are not, Mr. Speaker, insensitive to this situation. This government has a responsibility to help those who are most impacted by rising prices. This is why we will provide direct support to the most vulnerable, the disabled, and the pensioners. But also, Mr. Speaker, to middle income earners who are facing challenging times as well. We will ensure, Mr. Speaker, that no one is left behind because our people, our people, Mr. Speaker, need relief today. We have proposed meaningful, targeted, and appropriate measures to make life more affordable. We will ensure, Mr. Speaker, essential products remain accessible to the population. Sorry? We will ensure essential products. You said bus fare and rent. You were in government not and bread. You were in government not too long ago. We will ensure that essential products are and remain accessible to the population. Bakers will therefore continue to pay less for flour. And again, the government is subsidizing the price of flour. Sorry? The price of bread went up. Cooking gas. Yes, yes, yes. Cooking gas is another item that the vast majority of St. Lucian households need in their everyday life. We are therefore providing a subsidy to keep the price of a cylinder of cooking gas the same. Mr. Speaker, more jobs means more income, and more income means higher purchasing power. Fortunately, our economy is well on the recovery path. Jobs are available to the people, sectors such as renewable energy, ICT, manufacturing, tourism, and construction are all in need of more employees. It is a unique opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to bring thousands of young St. Lucians and women into the labor force. Mr. Speaker, more jobs for our people enable an easier, enables easier access to property. For many, owning a home is a life goal. This government will continue to help to make it a reality. We will ensure, Mr. Speaker, that each and every citizen has a decent and safe home to live in for himself and his family. A safe, decent, and affordable place to live can make a difference in the life of a family. We believe, Mr. Speaker, that ending poverty starts with every solution having access to home ownership. The low-income households are the hardest hit by the rise in prices. We know they struggle. We know that times are hard for them. We will not stay idle in the face of their difficulties. We will help them face these challenging times, just as we have always done and we will continue to do. This is the philosophy of a St. Labour Party government. Today, we are further strengthening our support to the people of St. Lucia. We know that St. Lucian households have insufficient means to support the essential needs of their families. Without government support, they will be unable to sustain their basic expenses. They are nonetheless, Mr. Speaker, the ones who are paying the highest price for inflation. Vulnerability leading to social exclusion is a risk that we don't want any of our citizens to face. COVID-19 has put to the test our social resilience. It is in the most difficult of times that you challenge yourself and go beyond the norms 
both individually and collectively. Throughout the pandemic, we have seen a formidable, a formidable sense of solidarity among solutions. They have supported each other individually and through NGOs. We, Mr. Speaker, will build on this momentum to further back our NGOs and charitable institutions in the impressive work that they do. And Mr. Speaker, it's well outlined in the estimates. I will not be going through the heads again. Disabled people, Mr. Speaker, are also experiencing higher costs. We need to further help them to meet their everyday needs. Our elderly are those who have made the success of St. Lucia. Today, we have achieved as a nation, we owe it today, what we have achieved as a nation, sorry, Mr. Speaker, we owe it to them. We owe it to their devotion, their effort, their sacrifice, their passion for building this country. They deserve all of our respect, our support, and our affection. Today, Mr. Speaker, they are indeed severely impacted by the rising prices. We need to further support them. Mr. Speaker, the older we are, the more costly life becomes. And it's for that reason, Mr. Speaker, we are determined to assist the elderly. Besides the support, Mr. Speaker, to the vulnerable, the disabled, and the pensioners, we are also giving special attention to those who do not need our support in normal times. They, they too, Mr. Speaker, are also affected by the rising cost of living. We can and we need to ease their burden throughout these trying times. The government will continue to support solution families. It is our priority. We will support them in the welfare and education of their children, in the health care of their families, and in preparing for the future. The rising cost of living is affecting not only the most vulnerable, but also the middle income earners. This government is conscious that they both require direct relief now. While the middle class is usually able to cater for their families, today it is irrefutable that they also need support. We are responding to their call. Is it the right thing to do? The answer can only be yes. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to spend a little time discussing some of my constituency matters. Um, Mr. Speaker, our strategy The philosophy, the vision of the Prime Minister is for the people, by the people. Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, uh, yesterday to listen to the member of Babuno. And a few days earlier, the Prime Minister said to her to keep her secrets and not share it. I will heed his advice and I will not, I will not share all of mine. But I want to assure the people of Ansari Canaries that I am in the kitchen. And I am in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen with the, with the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. And nothing goes out the door if we don't reserve a little bit of it for the people of Ansari Canaries. Mr. <laughs> Speaker, where are we speaking about the home, the home caregivers, the street lighting, the repairs of our jetty, both in Ancillary and in Canaries. I know the Minister of Tourism is working very hard to ensure that with the funds from the CTA that we could repair the jetty in Ancillary and the installation of boys. Mr. Speaker, the Ottawa Court, which has long been a dream for the young people of the constituency, is about to be littered. Other sporting facilities, uh, based on my discussions in the Minister of Sport, will be given the love and attention that they so desire. Mr. Speaker, we have the housing sites in Jackmel, Ansari, and Canaries. I look forward to the Minister of Housing with lightning rapidity to spend our oh, alacrity to, <laughs> to develop and make those parcels of land available to, the, to my constituents. Mr. Speaker, we have repaired, installed, and will continue to erect bus stops. 
the Jonas Road, Mr. Speaker, was improved. The Vanna Venus Ancillary Link Road, Mr. Speaker, is on track to continue to, to complete as per the contract. Mr. Speaker, but more importantly, we have embarked on the solarization of the fisheries complex in Ancillary. And the difference, Mr. Speaker, is whatever that we are saving from the cost of electricity will be put into a fund to help the fishermen, whether it is for medical purposes or to send their children to school. There will be an interpretation center and boardwalk in the mangrove in Ancillary, thanks to some funding from the European Union. A new bridge, Mr. Speaker, will be erected in Ancillary. An outdoor gym, Mr. Speaker, is about to be commenced in Jackmel. Lights on the plane field in Jackmel, Mr. Speaker, are hoping without any shenanigans, unlike what happened in the past, will become a reality. Lights on the Verna Court. We also have a smart classroom in Canaries. We also, with the permission and the funding from the Minister of Tourism, will be having carnival in Ancillary and in Canaries. I, didn't, I did not request any assistance for jazz, but I have requested assistance for carnival. The sun has set. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Speaker, I would like to extend my appreciation, deepest gratitude, to the staff of the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy for their commitment, Mr. Speaker, to this process. I would like to also like to extend my appreciation to the stakeholders who have shared their views and all those who have contributed to the preparation of this budget. We have given due consideration, Mr. Speaker, to their suggestion. Let us make no mistake, the measures unveiled, Mr. Speaker, are certainly not a cost. And I know the member, the leader of the opposition, the member for South, Biko South, will refer to them as a cost, Mr. Speaker. But in our view, Mr. Speaker, they are an investment. An investment in our country, an investment in our future, an investment in our people. Mr. Speaker, to close, I'd like to share this quote from Joseph A. Stiglitz. The only true and sustainable prosperity is shared prosperity. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.